Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. Which is going to be all about the ebb and flow filter. Though, most of what I'm going to cover today is also applicable to uh, aquaponics. Uh, and besides uh, this being a viewer request to build an ebb and flow, uh, the main reason I have for doing it is I do want to get into some aquaponics, uh, you know, small scale stuff, just to see what I can grow off of uh, fish waste and that sort of thing, and see how it works as a planter filter. Uh, and as far as I know, from what I've watched and uh, from what I've read, the main difference between an ebb and flow filter and aquaponics is the cycle rate. <clears throat> the rate at which the filter, or the bell siphon in this case, goes from full all the way to empty and then back to full again, it's more critical with uh, aquaponics than it is with ebb and flow. Ebb and flow, as long as the media doesn't dry out and as it fills completely, it fills the media chamber as well, and then drains below again the media, uh, you're good. That's all that really matters. Uh, I have had built these uh, years ago uh, when they were more popular, and they were fine. They worked well. Uh, I had issues with them as they aged because the main trick with these is uh, managing the amount of water coming in. In this case, it's coming from a pump now instead of a hose. So it's getting a constant amount of water. But as pumps age and as intake screens get plugged, that flow will change, and then that changes how uh, the bell siphon is gonna work. And as you can see, I have it balanced here really nicely now. Uh, what I've done is I, uh, well, the pump is pumping 250 gallons of water an hour, and I'm not gonna change that when I hook it up to the ebb and flow filter. And to restrict the, the rate at which it drains, I have inserted a piece of Schedule 80 half inch PVC, which I've turned down to fit the inside diameter of the acrylic pipe. And now I get a really nice uh, fill in and purge cycle. It's nice and smooth, it's reliable. I let this run for quite some time and I never had any issues with it. And that's what you need. And unfortunately, because as things get dirty and you know the, the usual stuff, uh, <coughs> that can change. And like I said, when I hook this up to the oven flow filter, I'm not going to change any of these parameters, and you're going to see how different it becomes. It's kind of interesting to see, actually. Now, there are a number of ways of altering the flow, and there are a number of ways of uh, making it easier for it to burp. The main difference is, if you've ever done any searches for uh, well, like aquaponics or bell siphons or any of that sort of stuff, You'll notice that in some versions, uh, it's different from this one in the sense that at the top of the bell, when as you, you see the water is going up here now, just above where that is, like where that's going to reach to, they drill a hole and they attach a tube to it, and then they run it down to just above where uh, the bell ends. You can see it's, it's going to get there shortly, and then what that does is it helps um, break the siphon easier. And I suspect it's really useful in the slower flow rate ones, like for aquaponics. Uh, but again, I don't uh, really know much about that. This version here is perfectly fine for like an ebb and flow. Once I get a little further along into this, and I'm going to get into doing uh, the aquaponics part of this, I will fiddle around with the other aspects of doing this. But when I did the first video for this, when I first built this bell siphon, I said I was going to build uh, the filter, and I wasn't. I actually wasn't really going to use this one because, like I said, this is the basic unit, and I wanted to test it against other ones. Well, I didn't really have time to do that, uh, and there's really no reason for it for an ebb and flow filter. So as we get further on into aquaponics and stuff, I'll show you other versions for this, and we can try testing it out then because I'm going to keep this together as is. Now, as I said, the main difference here for this one particularly is uh, I changed uh, how the water leaves the filter. I restricted that a little bit. And that's the easiest way of doing this, is just pretty much regulating uh, how much water is going in versus how quickly it leaves. And that's pretty much all there is to it. There's, there is no, there's no reason to make it more complicated than that, because as these things mature, enough things are going to change. Adding another thing into it is just going to make one more thing that you're going to have to keep an eye on. So this is exactly the same box as I had there, same hole. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this really, really simple because 
I actually don't really want to hook this up uh, long term. Sorry for those people who want me to run this for a while. But I have a bunch of other projects and I need those tanks. Uh, so I'm just going to run this for a little bit and just to show you how it works. And then I want these materials to be reusable uh, for aquaponics and stuff. So I'm keeping the chambers separate and I'm not actually going to be gluing them uh, into place. I will put a bit of silicone on the fittings. Uh, but that doesn't adhere to plastic, so it's not a big deal. It's just acting as a, a washer. Uh, and then I'm going to be able to take this apart and reconfigure it later on. And that's the kind of thing I want to do. So this is just going to be, this is a basic box uh, grating at the bottom. And what I'm doing here, because egg crate is uh, just a polycarbonate, uh, methylene chloride will uh, melt it and it will adhere to the acrylic. It's just to keep it centered. Uh, there's no real reason to do it other than that. Uh, like I said, this is just going to be a quick one of, and most of this is off cuts anyway, so it wasn't uh, really necessary. So I'm going to do here is I'm just going to quickly stick this together, and then I'm going to put the median. In this case, it's just going to be uh, some lava rock. I'm not going to bother with a pre-filter. I just want to show you how it fills and how it empties. If I wanted to make this more of a filter, like an actual filter I'm going to use, uh, what I would do is build another bracket, um, probably uh, just above the water line, like where the fill line is going to be, and then I put a, another piece of egg crate there, and I put a piece of polyester there, uh, or foam or whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be that would be the filter, and then I would instead of just having the water dump in, as I having it do with uh, the current setup, just all it is is just an elbow. I would probably also put on some way of you know, spreading that water out a little bit and then that way, uh, like I said, it would get more of a flow, even flow through it. Though the one thing that's actually kind of interesting about ebb and flow filters versus trickle filters, which by the way I, I prefer, uh, these things fill up so you don't have to worry about even spray, which you do when you're building uh, like a tower trickle or that sort of thing. And the reason why I like tower trickles is simply because they don't have uh, issues with you know as they mature they still drain <laughs> there's no necessity for it to fill and drain fill and drain so it is less of a mechanical issue for them to work when they're dirty i'm showing you this piece here uh, because i hadn't quite gotten uh everything leveled out i just had stuck everything together and this is the first cycle and it's not going to work <laughs> because I didn't have it quite level. I have it on a sheet of glass here on the top of aquariums. And this is another example of how small changes uh, will affect how this works. And you remember how nice and smooth the operation was when it was just the bell siphon. Now we have additional forces added here. You'll notice the chamber on the right where the media is is not draining as fast as it is through the bell siphon and that changes the pressure on the bell siphon and it takes longer for it to come to equilibrium which means in this particular case it takes longer for it to burp in other words break the, the siphon so it takes a, a little extra time not a big deal as i said earlier uh, when this is hooked up properly as a filter as long as the media doesn't dry out, you're good. And if this is uh, set up properly with uh, a cap on it and also an egg crate layer and polyester layer above where the media is, the chances of it drying out is pretty minimal. Even though, as you can see, it's taken a considerable amount of time for it to actually finally break, which is, there it goes. So what I've done now, uh, uh, the next clip here is I've balanced it properly and I have the flow, uh, like a, by balancing, I mean I leveled it out properly. Like I said, the the glass on top of the tank was just not quite um, <laughs> where it should have been. Uh, so anyway, now it's all set up properly. And even still, you'll notice it takes a little longer for the siphon to form. And it also takes a little longer for the siphon to break. Because, as you can see, the, there's a lag time between uh, how long it takes for that water uh, to go down in the chamber where the media is and to fill up over here. Now obviously I can get rid of all that. I mean, all these things are adjustable. Uh, I could have just made this one big chamber and then you wouldn't have that problem. Um, but again, as it gets dirty, uh, it would have a similar kind of effect. So I thought I would just leave this way, this way here, just to show you how small changes 
uh, can really affect these kinds of filters and that's pretty much the reason why I kind of got out of using them. That and the fact that I really never noticed enough of a difference between um, this version, like it didn't provide enough of a benefit over a tower trickle filter or a sump to warrant having to worry about uh, all this uh, cycling stuff. Now obviously when it comes to aquaponics it's a completely different story and in that case uh, there is a reason for it. Uh, there's That media is being used so in that case uh, it's probably more worth the effort and I'll have to obviously go to a little bit more of an extent with this um, when I get more into that. But that's obviously for a later video. So as always, if you like this style of video, uh, please uh, let me know uh, below, leave a comment, leave a like if you like, and uh, a subscription would be wonderful. And uh, I'm going to work on this a little bit more. I don't think you're going to see much of a video uh, regarding this until I do get into aquaponics. I let this run for pretty much the better part of a day. I uh, didn't have any issues with it, but you know it's brand new. It's not going to get dirty in a day, especially seeing how it's on a tank that doesn't even have fish in it at the moment. So pretty much after I was done filming this, I uh, took these apart. I mean, as I said earlier, they're not even glued together. You can see actually a little drip forming there in the middle between the two pipes. But the nice thing about uh, building things like this and using these kinds of shapes and whatnot, they're really reusable. I can either uh, cut these down and use them for other things, or because of the nice shape these are in, they are great for tower filters or any other sort of project. And if I don't end up using them for aquaponics, I will end up using them in that way. So thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next video, and bye for now.